before we begin, thank you very much to Ronma Leopard for joining the Patreon campaign, or rejoining, as it were. Thank you very much for the help and the contribution. Been a while. Thanks for coming back. We missed you. How have you been? Uh, thank you to everyone who helps keep the channel going and the daily content coming. It just takes a buck or two a month in Patreon, and it all keeps going. And today, we have to keep going on our best toys of every year. And we are at 1996. Uh, we are through the thick of it. We are out of Generation 2. We are back in a robust toy line. And from here on out, there's going to be plenty of toys to discuss. Oh, it's good to be back. So, first year of Beast Wars. There are quite a few toys, but still enough to where like half of the line we will not be talking about. Half of it we will be. Um, now, I will admit, if you have watched my best Beast Wars toys, like, tier list, if you watch that video, this might be a little bit redundant. That said, I have mixed things around a little bit for my personal tastes and preferences, a little bit more, um, the tier list is a little bit more analytical, it's a little bit more objective. This is absolutely subjective. This is me choosing where I feel, uh, these should all go. But... Let us continue the countdown. This is the top 10 Transformer toys of 1996. And we are going to start with a basic class toy because, of course, you know, of course, the basic class toys are going to be closer to the bottom because they're smaller, less featured. We're entering a very gimmick heavy period of Transformers where there really isn't any avoiding that. But it doesn't mean that some of them aren't very, very good. For instance, Insecticon. I really, really like this one. I really do. The blue and the green work really good as the color scheme. I love the added detail that went into it, like the mandibles of the of the beast mode becoming like not even the mandibles. I don't even know what you call them on a bug, but you though you know what I'm talking about. They add in like detail on the top of his chest. It looks really, really good. They also added in the wings opening on the back of the shell. They had no reason to do that. They had you know. They could have absolutely skipped that, but they did not, and I appreciate that added bit of effort. Looks really good. I also like how it's a design where the beast mode bug legs don't really get in the way all that much, you know? Like, pointed top, you know, tall on the shoulders. Looks good. Uh, pointed forward on the forearms. They're hard molded, so they could pass for some kind of melee weapon. I also appreciate the crossbow. That is a little bit unusual and interesting, but I feel like for beast figures, it's a little bit appropriate, don't you think? So, it's a really neat figure. Like, for its size and for, you know, being one of the first experimental figures of Beast Wars, I really, really like the attention that went into it. It's a fun figure, uh, and it's deserving of starting the list. Here's a toy I like more than most. I will admit it should be low on the list, but I can't help it. I really, really like this toy. Let's talk about Dinobot. And I don't like this toy because of how strong the character is or the Scott McNeil fanboy in me. I just like how this toy gen generally works. Admittedly, colors could have definitely been better. I'm not a fan of the salmon pink look. However, the toy itself does quite a bit that I actually like. Uh, the way the mutant head works to form like a like skull around his normal head. I like the look of that. I like the spin gimmick on his tail weapon. That works for me. And the way his transformation works, it is, like, it, it feels very iconic of Beast Wars to me. Uh, aside from the fact that because, you know, he's doing something cool with his tail and he doesn't have wings, this one comes up a little bit cleaner than a lot of Beast Wars toys do. So that's another plus to it. On top of the fact, I just like how he transforms. Uh, the way he comes together, like, gives me vibes of, like, if he's like side swipe of Beast Wars, like the way the front end, like the top of the front end of his uh, alt mode becomes his chest, that's kind of where it feels like. And this toy got reused about as much as side swipe has been over the years. Yeah, so admittedly, I know it has its detractors. There's actual reasons for that, and it's completely valid. But I do still think the toy is very fun. If you can get a copy that isn't fragile in one way or another. I will admit to a little bit of bias with number eight. Frankly, I should put him a little bit higher given how much I do like the toy, but I will acknowledge it's a basic class figure, so it can only go so high on this list. That said, um, I like turtles. I love the look of Snapper. And Snapper is one of those like 
weird figures that manages to pull off a color scheme that really shouldn't work. The green, orange, and red is not the color scheme I think of uh, when I would make like a cool turtle transformer, but he makes it work. I think the red and the orange going together and like offsetting the green is what's doing it for me. Uh, aside from the fact that it just adds a little bit more of like a more natural color to his shell. Uh, the overall design, I think, is really, really cool. The fact that, you know, like, because he is a, sh because he is half shell, something about the spring gimmick makes a little bit more sense to me, and it feels like they could hide and, like, cover the robot a little bit better than they could on some of the other spring figures. You know, like, Rat Trap, I kind of appreciate that, you know, Snapper doesn't have a bunch of legs hanging off of his back, you know, that kind of thing that some of them are, some of them suffer from. On top of the fact that the shell also just makes for a really good spot to hide his weapon, which is this triple barrel gun that I think is awesome. Yeah, this is just a design I would love to see again. Weirder figures have gotten ex has gotten brand new toys and, you know, you know, show some turtle fans some love here. Not the Ninja Turtles, we know we're getting that. But seriously, like someone do me a new snapper at deluxe size. I I want me a turtle transformer and this is a good place to start. Now, if you know me, you'd probably expect the Waspinator mold to end up on this list somewhere because, one, Scott McNeil, two, great character. But if we're going to be honest, the original version of the toy misses the notes here and there because it's based on its the original color scheme that, that they had in mind, and the show deviated from that to make the character look a little bit better in animation. Uh, it means the colors are a little bit off, and I don't like the gray on the toy, even, you know, cartoon accurate or not. Buzzsaw, on the other hand, I think absolutely nails it. I love the color scheme here. The purple, yellow, and green uh, just work for me, and I don't know why it works for me as hard as it does, but it does. I think it's a really striking-looking character. I think it looks a lot better than Waspinator, especially if you are using the robot mode head rather than the mutant head. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Yeah, Waspinator's great. Don't get me wrong, but there's just something about the way this mold looks in these colors that have always drawn me to it. Anytime a Waspinator toy has managed to get a buzzsaw repaint, I've been there. I've, been, you know, I, that is the one I have tracked down. Uh, beyond that, you know, it is a nice toy. There's a little bit of functionality that is a little bit iffy if yours has some loose ball joints, but beyond that, um, yeah. Uh, I like I like how he hides the stinger weapon. I like how he hides the the missiles into his uh, into his wings. That's a really clever trick, and it's just it's a nice, poseable, really cool looking figure in both modes. Yeah, Buzzsaw's like Waspinator is great, but I got to admit, if I'm only allowed to put one version of that year's mold on this list, I think Buzzsaw just hasn't beat by just a little bit. If I compare Dinobot to Sideswipe, as far as just how the toy is designed and how often it was reused, then we have to mention the Prowl of Beast Wars, and appropriately, appropriately enough, it was a toy that was almost designed to be Prowl. It is Cheetor. Yeah, when I mention that, now you kind of look at that sharp head crest on him and you go, Oh, I see it. Cheetor is iconic of Beast Wars. Um, now, when it comes down to it, I could like this was like a coin flip between, you know, Tigatron, you know, and uh, Cheetor. If I'm only going to include one, it's one or the other. And I will admit, it's a thing of the day. It's just like, what is my mood of the day? Which one I prefer over the other? Either one could have been on the spot in this list because they both look really good. You know, whether you have a anorexic tiger or a overweight cheetah. Either way, that said, most days I tend to like the Cheetor color palette just a little bit more. Um, it's just really iconic of the franchise. It's a really nice toy. It is a really nice toy. Again, very poseable. I love the fact that it has not one but two weapons that get built into his beast mode, and you know, and that's a really good use of the extra parts. Um, it's just such a good-looking figure, and I think the fact that it does have like that. Uh, that very Prowl-esque head does kind of like tie it into more traditional Transformer aesthetics despite his uh, more organic side. So it's a, it's a nice blend of the old and the new. I think it's a nice middle ground. So yeah, 
I, th I think I'm appropriate calling him Prowl, both in form and reusage, and kind of place in the franchise as far as just, like, level of character Cheetor is. Yeah, I really, really like this mold. But, you know, if you ask me tomorrow, it might be Tigatron. Today, it's, today it's Cheetor. Cheetor, however, is not my favorite deluxe of the toy line. For that, we have to go to another non-show character that was potentially going to be in the show and never made the cut. I could have mentioned that of Insecticon as well, by the way. Let's talk about Wolfang. Now, again, I love the mold itself. I like how it transforms. Admittedly, it's one of those toys that comes with one, a, uh, a big piece of kibble that becomes a shield. But in the context of Beast Wars, it did that a lot to its characters, where like just chunks of the alt mode became weaponry or you know defense of some kind. I can forgive it. It's kind of a thing that this toy line does. So rather than lazy engineering, it definitely feels like a feature that gets that is intentional. Uh, I do like the weapon and the big anchor looking missiles. I like how he stores the missiles in his actual body, so you don't lose track of those. That's actually a great thing too. I also like how the mutant head is just this battle mask that flips down. It, you know, not only does it uh, not only does it look cool in both ways. I like how the head looks both different ways, but it's also kind of cool that where like it's just like flip down battle time. You know, it's kind of one of the first toys that felt that way. Uh, combine that with just a really cool wolf mode, and you've got yourself a really really nice figure. Now, if K9 had come out at the same year, then we would be talking about K9 right now because I do prefer that deco overall. Uh, but it's 1996, which means it is the year of the wolf. We're going to start getting into bigger gimmick figures now, so uh, no surprise who the last four on this list are going to be. Again, as usual, it's just a matter of what order they come in. So we are going to start by talking about the Mega Class Scorponok. I do really, really like this toy. Admittedly, on the transformation side of things, this is a pretty simple figure. There's really not a whole lot of complexity to this. It's one of those toys where you can look at the back of the box and figure it all out for yourself. No instructions needed. However, it's the level of gimmickry and just fun stuff this toy does that makes him go over the top. You've got different gimmicks in both claws with the cyber bee and the firing missiles. And then you've got that stinger. A lot of scorpion transformers fail to give you a stinger tail that can actually sting. This one can. This one can actually reach all the way in front. So that alone makes it really, really cool. Um, yeah, this is one of those where, yeah, the deco could be better. And yes, the transformation is very paper thin. But the toy is fun. There's just a lot that this toy can actually do. It's like they took advantage of the fact the toy was so simple to cram it full of whatever spring-loaded, you know, you know, like gear-articulated gimmick they could figure out, and it's a brilliant job. Uh, when you get to the repaints later on, especially the modern reissue that's cartoon accurate, you're getting even better. But for 1996, he is worth number four. Number three is fresh on collectors' minds. Well, I say fresh, maybe about three years fresh, because we were supposed to get a brand new one and never did. Thankfully, the original Polar Claw toy is still really, really good. So aside from just being a little bit more involved in engineering than Scorponok was, he is still loaded with added gimmicks. You've got a flip-out gun as well as his own spring-out little friend, a bat in this case. You've got the opening mouth and the fangs that are bared when he does it. I didn't mean to make a bear pun there. I apologize. I will punch myself later. But just on top of that, you've got this really cool looking polar bear mode. Uh, and then you have this really, really good looking robot mode with some really nice mixes of colors. Um, he just looks like a really cool character. Like the fact that Fiction doesn't really use this character very much, you know, outside of just the very few Beast Wars comics we've gotten, is kind of a shame. I really like how the toy comes together. I really like the overall functionality of everything. Uh, I wish, why didn't we get the new one? Why am I still waiting for a Polar Claw? How does Thundertron get a brand new toy but not Polar Claw? Just, I'm, I'm, I'm literally like... Inquiring minds want to know, and by inquiring minds, I mean me. But like I said, we got the original, and the original one is still cool. 
Yes, that pun was intentional. No, I will not punch myself for that one. Time now to get into the big boys, and I will be honest, this is another one where it's just kind of a mood of the day. Either one of these toys could be the number one of 1996. There's really no way to evenly parse this. It really just depends on what you're after in a toy. Uh, but for, for now, for me, we're going to talk about Megatron first. This, this is one of those toys where if the deco was a little bit better, I would have bumped him up to number one. That said, the functionality of the whole thing is awesome. You've got the water squirt gimmick, which is uh, something that Beast Wars played with once in a while, which is nice. You do have extra firing missiles off the hips. You've got that spring-loaded claw on his, uh, on his other arm. Again, not a bad-looking mutant head. And, yeah, just... It's a T-Rex. It's a transforming toy T-Rex that's never not going to be cool. That's always going to be a hit, no matter what you do to it. It's a really, really cool figure. And admittedly, if you're looking for a transformation experience, better than number one. This is what I mean when I say like it really depends on what you're after in a toy, and why I could have put Megatron at number one. Uh, for me, however... Um, yeah, there's just a little bit holding him back. And that really does just comes down to, I wish he didn't look so plain and so many details were missed in the robot mode. Beyond that, great figure, great look, great, you know, great weaponry. Like, all around, really, really solid toy. Really solid toy. But not number one. And, of course, if Megatron is number two, that means there's only one monkey that can be at number one. We now need to talk about Optimus Primal. I know in these top 10 lists, uh, it is pretty common for an Optimus to end up at the top, but guess what? He's the main character of the franchise almost every year, meaning he's always going to have a lot of effort put into him. They're not going to risk putting out a bad Optimus. And this one does a pretty good job despite a little bit of a handicap. The fact that the Beast Mode is already humanoid in shape meaning he doesn't transform as much as some of his fellow Maximals or even as much as some of his enemy Predacons. However, it does do enough to still be fun to transform, and then you have the ludicrous amount of things that it does. You've got the mutant head again. You've got the flip-out shoulder cannons with launching missiles. You've got the swords that can, uh, you know, that you can hide away inside his back. You've got the double missile launcher hidden in one forearm and a mace hidden in the other. And despite his full level of articulation, you also have a chest-beating gimmick because Gorilla. On top of the fact that he just looks way more interesting and dynamic than Megatron does. With a different, you know, with an actual, like, painted chest that looks really good. A lot of color going throughout his arms and legs. Way nicer job. Again... Remember, this was originally supposed to be a brand new Optimus Prime. So they're going to go all out on Optimus Prime. But even as Optimus Primal, it just does such a good job. There's so much to like about this toy. And for Beast Wars, yeah, at least as far as 1996 goes, that's the best toy they had. And that brings us to the end of another Top 10 list. So, as usual, you're free to disagree in the comments. I know there's some versions of molds you'd prefer to be in there, or Megatron should have been number one. Uh, you are all free to debate that in your own time. It's just my opinion. But for now, thank you everyone for watching. I will see you next time.